I'm Atubo George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. We are talking about entering into God's rest. Hey, listen. Before we go into today's broadcast, let's call for that delivery. Are you ready? Join me now. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, as simple as that is, it's powerful to settle you. I'm telling you the truth. See, many have just not accepted and believed these things. But I know a miracle is taking place in your life today. Praise God. Now, we, we read in Hebrews chapter 4, that God, verse 15, it says, Be diligent to enter into that rest. If not, you will fall after the same manner of disobedience. Is it that you enter into the rest or you fall? And yesterday I was sharing with you how prayer, how we enter into rest in prayer. And you... God, let me, let, me, let me read something to you in Isaiah chapter 30. Oh, blessed Lord Jesus. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 15. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel. What did he say? In returning and rest, you shall be saved. Did you see that? Then it says, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Now this is the plan God has, not noise. Not too much work. Hey! He said in returning. Returning from where? Because you've been walking in the wrong path. That's why Jesus said, come to me. Now you were going. He said, come. That returning. That's repentance. Oh, there are lots of things people need to repent from. No, no, no. People just have this idea that when you say repent, you say, oh, which sin have I committed? Hey! You not walking in rest itself is walking in the wrong path. And repenting simply means returning to the right path. So yesterday we read in Jeremiah, it says, find the old path. Find it. How will you find the old path? Through the Holy Spirit. You see, without the Holy Spirit, you cannot even talk of entering rest. So now he says, he, he gives you the clue here that in returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. This is what the Lord has said. Not in struggling and in making noise. In quietness and confidence, you find strength. That's why sometimes, yesterday I was talking about prayer. Sometimes, you know, I was studying the difference between praying in tongues and praying in the Spirit. Now, when you're praying in the Spirit, you realize that you'll be calmer. Yes, there are times that you hit those high notes in prayer. You know, somebody can be praying, La Kusa Kayada, they suddenly go, Hey! Now it's not because they want to shout. Of course, in every good thing, in every right thing, there's a fake one. You understand what I'm talking about? But I'm not talking about the fake now. And, and, and as, as, as preachers, we must um, become wary of this thing we do in trying to show who is fake. It's useless. I'm telling you, that's a useless um, route to take in ministry. The reason is because it will never end. You know, let me, let me just talk about this for a while. 
I'll never forget years ago, you know, I was, I was concerned about things like this and I began to pray and I was so angry in my spirit. I was angry in my spirit. I had seen some things, I've seen some videos of what some preachers were, were doing. And I just knew these men were false. I knew. And, and, and I, I looked at that crowd and I was like, what's going on here? I was angry. I wish, look, why can't this thing stop? And, and so I began to pray. I, I was actually talking to the Lord and I was telling the Lord, Lord, you're not fair to us. And I'm telling you what I was, I said, Lord, you're not fair to us. The point, the fact that you let these things grow, you let these things continue, means you're making our work difficult. When I mean our work, I'm saying those of us that are true. Yeah, yeah. If you're true, you will know. If you're, if you're preaching the gospel for gain, you will know. You know your mind, you know your heart. You can't deceive yourself. So I, I was talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, Lord, sincerely, allowing this, especially these days of social media, oh, you see all sort of things, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so I began to pray. I said, Lord, you must stop this thing. You must stop it. Now, you know, first of all, the fact that you got to know it doesn't mean that's when it started. It's been, it's been on. In fact, when you read scriptures, you realize that they've been on right from time. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, they've been there. And so I was praying and, and, and I was just trying to accuse the Lord and, and, and trying to, I was trying to use psychology on God. You know, like, you're making our work difficult. How can you let these things to be good? And then the Lord spoke to me and said, he said, what is your problem? I said, my problem. It's not my problem. Our problem. He said, don't put it on my problem. It's our problem. We're dealing with the kingdom here. You're letting these men scatter the kingdom. And the Lord said something remarkable to me. I will never. See, this. See, the Lord is too wise. And so he said, what is your problem? I said, it's not my problem. It's our problem. And then the Lord said to me, he said, son, both the deceiver and the deceived are one. What is my business in that? It took me a while to understand what he meant. I'm telling you the truth. I like, both the deceiver and the deceived are one. What is my part in that? Then, hey, Kobari Adaba, he began to show me that. It is not everybody that can be deceived. It is not everybody that can stay in deceit. So when, when you see, when you see a man continuously in deceit, sincerely, he is not so different from the one who's deceiving him. They are in the same class. Now, you must understand this. It's not everybody that is a child of God. Not everyone. It's not everybody even in church that is a child of God. It's not everybody that claims to be born again that is born again. Even It's not every human being you see on the earth that is a real human being. Praise. Yeah, that's the truth. So the Lord now said to me, he said, leave them. Let them continue what keeps them happy while I build my church. I said, wow. Wow. You see, because everyone who's a child of God, there is the spirit of truth in you. You might start out following a deceiver, but you will never go so far with him. You will get to that point I want you to listen to me. You will get to that point where you begin to probe and like, mm -mm, something is not right. Something is not right. Now, when you get to that point, God is now giving you the opportunity to decide what you want. Do you want to follow the path of righteousness or do you want to follow the deceiver? Are you seeing that now? It's now your choice. If you look at it and say, ah, if I walk away now, what will people say? People will think that I don't know what I'm doing. That's what I've been following. Let me just think. You have chosen the wrong path. 
by choice. Now, that is where your judgment begins. The fact that you were deceived initially, no judgment for you. But in that deception comes a day where you have to make a choice. From the day you made your choice, that is the day your judgment begins. So when you see people following one who you see is a deceiver, the best thing you can do for them is to pray that, Lord, your children that have mistakenly entered into that place, can you open their eyes to see? But you cannot stop the deceiver. Your shouting, your prayer will do nothing. Pastor, why are you saying that? Yeah, because Jesus gave us a parable about the man who planted a good seed. And then overnight, the enemy planted tars around the good seed. And when the, the servants came and told him, he says, Master, see what we found. He said, should we go? And he said, no, lest when you are removing the tars, you will destroy the good seed also. He said, leave them till the time of the harvest. I know I'm going to take care of them. That's exactly what the Lord is saying today. Leave them till the time of the harvest. But you that is a child of God, be smart. Don't get deceived. And the only way for, not, for you not to get deceived is for you to know the Lord for yourself. Praise God. And that's what he's giving to us. How are you a child of God and you cannot confidently say you hear the voice of God? Brothers and sisters, wake up. Oh, my pastor said, my pastor said, oh, my prophet, my prophet said, my prophet said, my, my, my pastor said, my pastor Come on now. As much as it's important we honor those that God has put in place over our life sometimes, and, 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 and it's, it's important we honor them, but let me tell you this truth. They are there to show us to him. Now, if you have been there for so long, Without seeing Jesus, you have been led astray. If you cannot confidently... Now, you see, you, you are brought in. Now, now, a pastor can pray or someone can, can preach the gospel to you and you believe and you feel, look, I don't know much about this. Let me be following you guys. But brothers and sisters, the first assignment in anybody's life when it comes to spirituality the first assignment is to take you to Jesus. And what does it mean take you to Jesus? The moment they take you to Jesus, guess the first thing Jesus will do? He will call you by your name. The moment Jesus calls you by your name, he starts dealing with you directly. Now from that day, from that day, the only reason you will need the person that brought you to Jesus is for fellowship and for confirmation. But from that moment, you ought to be dealing with the Lord yourself. If you still dwell in the path where you're dealing with the Lord through a man, you must see a prophet before you know which direction to. You know, it's so funny, some people call and say, hey, man of God, I, I, I just woke up this morning. I don't know, I'm thinking whether I should drink um, uh, tea or coffee. I, I just feel there's something God wants. Can you, can you help me pray? And ask? People make this kind of request. Can you help me, help me ask God whether it's tea or coffee I should take? Because the way my body is doing me. And someone says, okay, okay, I'll pray. Huh? You are supposed to know the Lord for yourself. You are supposed to hear the voice for yourself. He says, my sheep hears my voice and they follow me. If you don't pay attention to hearing the voice of God for yourself and believing in him when he speaks to you, I tell you this truth, your laziness will lead you astray and to make you fall prey to the hands of, 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 of evildoers and deceivers. Your laziness. And, and, and see, when, when, you, when, you, when, you when you suffer 
as a result of your laziness. You have no one to blame but yourself. Wake up, brothers and sisters. And, 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 and some, some, you know, there are some genuine ministers of God who ha have this same passion. I'm sharing this with you because God has dealt with me concerning and maybe this will help you. You know, because you're genuine and you see all these things, your heart goes out. And you say, God has given me a ministry to stop them. There is no such ministry. I know that one for true. There is no such ministry. There is no such ministry of locating false prophets and calling them out. There is no such ministry. If you take on that, just like someone say, God has called me to the ministry of casting out devil. There is no such ministry. If you take on that ministry, you have entered into an environment of everlasting distraction. Oh yes, I'm telling you the truth. You will be chasing shadows. People will look at you and say, oh, man, that man is powerful. When he comes here, all the demons are just crying. No, you're not powerful. You're very powerless. Because you're doing what grade one, grade one in Christianity. That's where you are. That's where you are. When you begin to come up into the knowledge and revelation of God, you realize that that's nonsense. I'm telling you the truth. You realize that that's nonsense. See, sometimes we, we pride ourselves in the work we are able to do in people's lives. But that's nothing to be proud about. The pride we must carry is that we have led people to know Jesus for themselves. And we see them grow. We see them share with us the things Jesus is telling them. And we say, wow. That's true because he told me the same thing. Praise God. That's how, you see, because our job is to raise them to become brethren. You cannot always be their prophet, brothers and sisters. And hey, let me tell you, it doesn't remove your prophetic feather. It doesn't. I kaba satana bayadaba. You are who you are by the knowledge of God that you carry, not the title you carry. So people may call you apostle or prophet, and, and you are still operating 20 years anointing. The anointing you possessed 20 years ago, you are still there. But the knowledge of God you had 20 years, you are still there. I'm priding yourself, I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet. See, our ranking in the kingdom is not by the title we carry. Our ranking in the kingdom is by the knowledge of God that we carry. And that knowledge we carry, I tell you this truth, we can't even share half of it. Because you see, first of all, you, you carry that knowledge and because it's true, I'm not talking about Father, what will I share? Today? Because there are people that, do, Father, what will I preach today? He preach, he gives you one thing. Oh, wow, well, I've never, and then you're concerned about preaching it. No, 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 no. Know it. Relate with him. Understand him. It's for yourself. Then you share the testimony of him when you're communicating with people. This is what will bring the body of Christ to the place of maturity. Not when we claim men of God over people. I believe the Lord is speaking to someone because my time is up. Father, I pray that your truth will grow grow, grow in our hearts. And we receive your understanding today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow.